Sci-Fi, formerly Sci-Fi Channel and Sci-Fi, currently stylized as Sci-Fi, is an American basic cable and satellite television channel that is owned by the NBC Universal Cable Entertainment Group division of NBC Universal, a subsidiary of Comcast. The channel features science fiction, fantasy, horror, supernatural, paranormal, drama, and reality programming. Sci-Fi is available to 92.4 million households in America. History In 1989, Boca Raton, Florida, communications attorney Mitchell Rubenstein and his wife Laurie Silvers devised the concept for the Sci-Fi Channel, and planned to have it begin broadcasting in December 1990, but lacked the resources to launch it. In March 1992, the concept was picked up by USA Networks, then a joint venture between Paramount Pictures and Universal Studios. The channel was seen as a natural fit with classic films and television series that both studios had in their vaults, including Universal's Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Rod Serling TV series Night Gallery, along with Paramount's Star Trek. Star Trek's creator Gene Roddenberry and author Isaac Asimov were among those on the initial advisory board, but both had died by the time the channel finally launched on September 24, 1992. Rubenstein recalled, "...the first thing that was on the screen was dedicated to the memories of Isaac Asimov and Gene Roddenberry." Leonard Nimoy was master of ceremonies at the channel's launch party, held at the Hayden Planetarium in Manhattan. Asimov's widow Janet and Roddenberry's widow Majel Barrett were both in attendance. The first program shown on the network was the film Star Wars. In 1994, Paramount was sold to Viacom, followed by Seagram's purchase of a controlling stake in MCA, of which Universal was a subsidiary, from Matusta the next year. In 1997, Viacom sold its stake in USA Networks to Universal, who spun off all its television assets to Barry Diller the next year into the new company Studios USA. Three years later, Diller would sell Studios USA back to Universal, by then a subsidiary of Vivendi SA at the time known as Vivendi Universal. Vivendi's film and television production and cable television assets were then merged with General Electric's NBC to form NBC Universal in 2004. In 2010, Comcast purchased Sci-Fi's parent company NBC Universal. A high-definition version of the channel launched on October 3, 2007, on DirecTV. In 2013, Sci-Fi was given the James Randi Educational Foundation's Pegasus Award for what was described as questionable reality programming involving paranormal topics. Branding history From 1992 to 1999, the network's first logo consisted of a planet with a ring, made to look like Saturn, with «Sci-Fi Channel» written on it. The network's second logo, which was used from 1999 to 2002, dropped the hyphen and the word «Channel» from the name. The network's third and final «Ringed Planet» Logo ran from 2002 to 2009, and was designed by Lambie Nairn. The logo made its debut on December 2, 2002, with the launch of the Steven Spielberg miniseries Taken. The network also launched a new image campaign with the tagline, If, which expresses the limitless possibilities of the imagination. Identification bumps depicted surreal situations such as a baby breathing fire, as well as a woman in a stately sitting room kissing a bug eyed, big eared animal. On March 16, 2009, NBC Universal announced that Sci Fi was rebranding as Sci Fi. Network officials also noted that, unlike the generic term, Sci Fi, which represents the entire genre, the term, Sci Fi 
As a sensational spelling can be protected by trademark and therefore would be easier to market on other goods or services without fear of confusion with other companies' products. The only significant previous use of the term, sci-fi, in relation to science fiction was by the website Sci-Fi Portal, which became Airlock Alpha after selling the brand to an unnamed company in February 2009. The name change was greeted with initial negativity, with people deliberately mispronouncing Sci-Fi as SIFEE or CFE to make fun of the name change. The parody news anchor Stephen Colbert made fun of the name change on the Colbert Report by giving the channel a tip of the hat for spelling the name the way it's pronounced and noting that the tide is turning in my long fought battle against the insidious soft sea. The new name took effect on July 7, 2009. Sci-fi has since added reality shows and edged further from strictly science fiction, fantasy and horror programming. The rebranding efforts at NBC Universal's Sci-Fi Channel's worldwide resulted in most rebranding as Sci-Fi or Sci-Fi Universal. However, over one third of the channels did not take on Sci-Fi. As any part of their names, channels in Japan and the Philippines rebranded to or were replaced by Universal Channel, while each of the channels in Poland, Romania, Serbia, and Slovenia would become Sci-Fi Universal. In Polish, Sci-Fi does not suggest imagination or science fiction, but rather syphilis. In Australia, the Sci Fi Channel was a joint venture not solely owned by NBC Universal. The channel was uniquely rebranded as SF until its closure, and was replaced by a NBC Universal solely owned version of Sci Fi, branded as such, matching the standard international Sci Fi branding. On May 11, 2017, in honor of the network's upcoming 25th anniversary, Sci-Fi unveiled a major rebranding that took effect on air June 19. The new branding was intended to reposition the channel back towards targeting fans of the fantasy and sci-fi genres. Network head Chris McCumber explained that the network's goal was to put fans at the center of everything we do and explained a stacked, square-shaped form of the logo as being akin to a badge. Sci-Fi also planned to place a larger focus on its genre news division Sci-Fi Wire, disclosing the possibility of extending the website to television as well. Topic programming Sci-Fi's programming includes original made-for-cable movies, miniseries, and series. In the past, the channel concentrated on classic science fiction shows. However, under NBC Universal ownership, the channel has altered its programming to target more mainstream audiences. In 2006, it began airing programs such as Law and Order, Special Victims Unit, ECW, and WCG Ultimate Gamer. The network had gained significant international attention for its successful original miniseries and subsequent four season series Battlestar Galactica. In addition to many awards, the United Nations invited the main cast to a retrospective and discussion. Also prominent was the network's airing of Taken, which won the Emmy Award that year for Best Miniseries. Sci Fi was also known for airing Japanese anime. It first began airing English dubbed anime films and original video animations in the early 1990s, although the programs were often edited in order to fit the market pressures typically placed on basic cable. It was the first to show the streamlined pictures English dubs of the films Robot Carnival, Lensman and Acura, as well as airing Central Park Media's Dominion, Tank Police, Gaul Force, and Project A Co. After a break in airings, anime programming returned on June 11, 2007, with a weekly two-hour programming block called Arnie Monday. Intended to directly compete with Cartoon Network's Adult Swim, the block featured English dubs of various anime series licensed by Manga Entertainment. 
During February 2008, the channel also aired anime on Tuesday nights in a second programming block. In July 2009, Sci Fi announced that they had renewed and expanded their licensing agreement with Manga Entertainment to continue Arnie Mondays, as well as to add a similar two hour block of horror anime also called Arnie Monday to its sister channel Chiller. Sci-Fi's anime block was later moved to Thursday nights, starting March 14, 2011, where it remained until all anime programming was abruptly removed from the schedule on June 9, 2011. In addition to the aforementioned ECW, Sci-Fi has aired other shows from WWE, including NXT in 2010 and SmackDown from 2010 until 2015, when the show moved to Sci-Fi's sister channel USA Network in early 2016. Topic: Sci-Fi original films. Spearheaded and originally launched by Thomas Vitali in 2001, and managed by Vitali, Chris Regina, and Ray Canella, with the later editions of Karen O'Hara and Macy Lau, Sci-Fi Pictures original films are typically independently made B-movies with production budgets of $1 million to $2 million each. These films usually premiere on Saturday nights. They are also one of the sponsors for the Coalition for Freedom of Information. The movies have become one of the longest-lasting vestiges of sci-fi's schedule. One of the most memorable campaigns for the movies presented these films as part of the most dangerous night of television, Saturdays. Over the years, sci-fi's promotion of the movies leans into the escapist fun promised by them, with titles such as Sharktopus, Mansquito, Two-Headed Shark Attack, Ogre, Ice Twisters, Star Runners and Sharknado. Since 2001, Sci-Fi has worked with a number of different production companies, most of them independent, to make over 200 original movies of this type. Topic: <laughs> Media. Topic: <laughs> 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 Websites. Sci-Fi.com and Sci-Fi.com Sci-Fi's website launched in 1995, at Sci-Fi.com, under the name, The Dominion. It dropped the name in 2000. The site has won a Webby Award and a Flash Forward Award. From 2000 to 2005, Sci-Fi.com published original science fiction short stories in a section called, "...Sci-Fiction", edited by Ellen Datlow, who won a 2005 Hugo Award for her work there. The stories themselves won a World Fantasy Award, the first Theodore Sturgeon Award for online fiction for Lucius Shepard's novella, "...Over Yonder." and four of the Science Fiction Writers of America's Nebula Awards, including the first for original online fiction for Linda Nagata's novella, Goddesses. On April 22, 2006, the site launched Sci-Fi-pedia, a commercial wiki on topics including anime, comics, fandom, fantasy, games, horror, science fiction, and toys, UFOs, genre-related art and audio, and the paranormal. In 2009, Sci-Fi-pedia was shut down without explanation. As part of the channel's rebranding in 2009, the URL was changed to Sci-Fi.com. As of 2010, Sci-Fi.com began to contain webisode series including Rees, Kingdom Falling as of October 26, 2010, The Mercury Men as of July 25, 2011, and Nuclear Family as of October 15, 2012. Sci-fi.com was redesigned in early 2015, allowing users to watch the live channel on the site, as well as episodes of most current programming. The website was once again redesigned and combined with SciFiWire.com on June 19, 2017, in alliance with SciFi's rebranding. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Sci-Fi games. 
SciFiGames.com is an online games portal which offers free-to-play MMO and casual games. The site features predominantly sci-fi and fantasy games from third-party developers. In April 2015, the news section of SciFiGames.com was rebranded to feature news from G4 to prevent trademark dilution of SciFi's defunct sister gaming-focused network. In 2010, Sci-Fi Games signed a deal with defunct publisher THQ to co-produce De Blob 2. Sci-Fi Games would also co-produce Red Faction, Armageddon. Topic: <laughs> Sci-Fi Wire. Sci-Fi Wire, formerly Sci-Fi Wire and Blast R, is a website operated by Sci-Fi featuring coverage of news in the science fiction, horror, and fantasy genres. The site was rebranded in 2010 as Blast R, with the addition of feature articles, guest columnists such as Phil Platt, popular science news and coverage, and video content. In December 2016, Blast R rebranded as Sci-Fi Wire. Editor in Chief Adam Swiderski stated that this change was to closer associate the website with the Sci-Fi Television Channel. As of March 2018, Sci-Fi Wire releases five regular podcasts, including two recap series following The Expanse and Colony and The Fandom Files, which features interviews with public figures about their pop culture obsessions. Guests have included Leland Chi and Mike Daniels of the Green Bay Packers. Topic: Periodicals. Topic: Sci-Fi Magazine. Sci-Fi Magazine was the channel's official magazine. It later became an unaffiliated magazine but often covers sci-fi shows. Topic: <inaudible> Science Fiction Weekly. Science Fiction Weekly was an online magazine started and edited by Craig Engler and Brooks Peck on August 15, 1995. In April 1996, it began appearing exclusively on the Dominion", as part of a partnership with the site, before being sold to the Sci-Fi Channel completely in 1999. The publication covered various aspects of science fiction, including news, reviews, original art, and interviews, until it merged with Sci-Fi Wire in January 2009. Ratings. <laughs> <laughs> In 2008, Sci-Fi, then the Sci-Fi Channel, averaged a 1.0 household rating, 242,000 viewers among adults 18 to 34, up 4% vs 2007, 616,000 viewers among adults 18 to 49, up 5% vs 2007, 695,000 viewers among adults 25 to 54, up 6% vs 2007, and 1 million 278,000 total viewers up 7% vs 2007 it saw two years of consecutive growth among female audiences, with a 12% increase among women 25 to 54, a 14% jump in women 18 to 49 and 6% in women 18 to 34 the channel also was ranked among the top 10 watched channels for male viewers ages 18 to 54 and women ages 25 to 54, number 10. For 2010, Sci-Fi averaged 1.199 million viewers, down 6% from 2009. In adults 18 to 49, the channel averaged 0.539 million viewers, down 11% from 2009. For 2010, Sci-Fi did not hold any of the top 20 primetime original series. Topic: See also. NBC Universal International Networks. Showcase Canadian TV channel produced a number of original series that air on this channel. 
Space Canadian TV channel, a similar Canadian channel Sci-Fi Universal